I have not seen a crime of this nature, especially when you take into account it was 12-year-old girls. They're charged with attempting to kill another 12-year-old girl who was stabbed Saturday 19 times. The stabbing of her classmate 19 times. These are two assailants who planned for six months how to commit murder. To please a horror character named Slenderman. 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 Basically a modern day boogeyman called Slenderman. They truly believe they were just going to, to kill this little girl allegedly and walk off into the, the forest to find this fictional creature. Welcome to Psych IRL, my name is Donna. All right, so I know the Slenderman case is an old case, but it did really make me think about how the youth interact with the internet today. The internet is a great place to find information. It's redefined how we learn and made some of the things highlighted in school obsolete. For example, the memorization of dates isn't as important anymore because you can find the answer with your phone in less than a minute. You may want to rethink attending trivia night, but not knowing when Columbus sailed the ocean blue won't kill you. The titre du film est Le scaphandre et le papillon. Yes. I'm sorry, no, over to the Einsteins. However, an ever-present danger arises with such accessible and free information. Fake news and unreliable sources is a problem, but it's more than that. The danger is almost undetectable, but it's visible in the case of the Slenderman stabbing. May 2014. In the relatively safe city of Waukesha, Wisconsin, it was just like any other day. Morgan Geyser had just turned 12 years old. To celebrate, she invited two other friends over for a slumber party, one of which was Anissa Wire. The girls had met at school and quickly bonded over the fictional character called Slenderman. He's said to be tall, thin, and faceless, often wearing a dark suit, having disproportionately long arms. His victims were often children. He'd appear in photos just before the children would vanish. Geyser and Wire were so obsessed with this character, they claimed they wanted to prove the skeptics wrong. To do so, they'd have to commit an act that would impress Slenderman. You have to kill Bella. Okay. Okay, and you know why she said that? Like, why she said that? Because we had to supposedly Prove ourselves worthy to slender. Geyser invited another friend to her slumber party, Peyton Leitner. The plan was for Geyser and Wire to murder this girl in order to please Slender Man. The birthday party went on as normal as it could possibly be. They went to the skate park, and there was even a cake. They arrived at Geyser's home at around 9.30 p.m. near bedtime. According to Geyser and Wire, the original plan was to kill the victim at 2 a.m. to make it seem like she was still sleeping. Both girls would then run off to Slenderman's supposed mansion located in the middle of the Nicolette National Forest, but the plan fell through. They carried it out the next morning, though, where the 12-year-old girls lured Peyton Leitner into the woods. There, she was stabbed 19 times and left to die. The last thing she said to me, to, to me was, I trusted you. And then she said, I hate you. And then we lied to her. And Lisa said that she'd go get help. The victim crawled out of the woods and was found by a cyclist. She came upon a 12 year old female. She appears to be stabbed. She appears to be what? Stabbed. Stabbed? Correct. Okay. Sir, you still there? Yes. Hi, sir. So, is are you with this 12-year-old female? Yeah, she says she's having trouble breathing. She said she was stabbed multiple times. Stabbed multiple times? <laughs> yeah. I think, um, and he stabbed her first, and then I continued, and then, like, she was like, Morgan, make sure she doesn't escape, and then it was like, uh... She was rushed to the hospital and luckily is alive today, after several surgeries. So every time a tragedy happens, there always seems to be this blame with media. You know, it was caused by video games, it was caused by movies, it was caused by GTA. And obviously there's this relationship with mental illness and also um, how much the parents and parenting had to factor into it. So there isn't a very clear definition of what caused this to happen. Here's why I thought about this case. Uh, so when I was in college, I actually had to work with a bunch of little kids, students, fourth graders, and they all had iPads integrated into their classrooms. 
In a way, though in a lesser degree, we've all been victims of the Slender Man. In multiple interviews, both girls are described as having trouble making friends. The girls happen to bond and spend their time enjoying creepy pastas about Slender Man. From an outside perspective, the behavior is harmless. It isn't any different from enjoying one of these books. But the algorithmic nature of the internet changes things just a little bit. From Facebook, Google, YouTube, Twitter, everything you click on is designed to please you, to make you stay on the site a little longer. The parents tell David there were no warning signs of violence. I did search her iPad. I did watch over her shoulder. Do you feel responsible? I think um, on some level I'll, I'll always feel responsible for not knowing that my daughter wasn't well. As a mother, you're supposed to be there to protect your child. The user is actively feeding the algorithm information about themselves, and in turn, the algorithm is only showing them what they may like, to lead them to another link they may be interested in so that they stay longer than that. The cycle goes on and on. In a way, the free choice of the internet is actually harmful. It can lead to communities committing confirmation bias. We make poor decisions because we've only looked for data that confirms our desired beliefs, rather than data that challenges them. As a result, you you have these bubbles of people that think exactly alike, and it often leads to bad decision making, also known as groupthink. People become so overconfident in their own beliefs because they're backed up by others with a similar viewpoint. When faced with challenging opinions then, they react with hostility. You see this all over places like Twitter and Facebook. Despite it not leading to a horrible tragedy such as this, we still can learn something from this event. There was disconfirming evidence of the Slender Man everywhere. The myth was born in 2009 in an online forum called Something Awful, a Photoshop contest where users had to doctor images, integrating the paranormal was held. This is ultimately how Slender Man was born. The creator, Victor Serge, began digitally inserting Slender Man into other old photographs, newspapers, and child drawings. The myth caught wind and other users began creating their own works with the fictional character. Photographs, stories, and videos. Though Geyser and Wire had access to this information, confirmation bias and group think made their belief in the Slender Man stronger. Geyser and Wire were both charged with attempted first-degree intentional homicide. Geyser sentenced to 40 years in a mental institution and Wire 25. Would this have happened if there was more adult guidance? Perhaps not. But who guides the adults? You see that building over there? That is the LA Times building. This is the first place some blame. Media. It was that sensational article's fault. No, it was the video games. No, it was the scary movies. And I'm talking about pre-internet here. Um, we're like moving into this age where algorithms are used for efficiency and technology is being implemented into classrooms. So I think we're gonna see more blame going in that direction very soon. And like, yeah, I agree that some media can act as the catalyst for why someone may do something. There is no causal relationship. Being on the internet or reading something about Slender Man won't turn you into a murderer. It's more plausible that people who have violent thoughts are attracted to those subjects. Now you're getting at the root cause, mental health. And that's not easy to accept because now you gotta admit that something's wrong. And that can be scary because that means the responsibility is on us. You can't blame the algorithm, but with that you could also say, now I have the power to attempt to help. What was once thought to unite us seems to divide us now more than ever. While we preach stop the war or peace on social media, we build wars with those we don't agree with. Our neighbors, our friends, our family. So how do we adapt to the quickly evolving advancement of the internet? The danger of confirmation bias and group think. The idealistic answer is to research beliefs opposed to yours, or watch whatever our kids are looking at. Though not wrong, it's kind of unrealistic. We're supposed to be doing that anyway. Yet, the negativity is still on social media. In addition, you can't force others to do proper research. Would they even know what to look out for if they attempted it? The best thing we can do is show compassion to those with different beliefs than ourselves. No, we don't need to conform or be this person's friend, but the least we can do is give another human being our respect. It's hard because our ego can get in the way, but putting someone down has never been shown to convince one of their wrongs. While we fear and place blame on the internet and Slender Man, the real monster can be our own ego. 
So I know what you're thinking. Ew, compassion, respect. Yeah, it's a little idealistic, I know. And trust me, if you know my vlogs, you know that I don't like too many cheesy things. So I guess what you can think of is cult leaders and stuff. Um, cult leaders don't win people over by telling them, hey, you're stupid. And then the person goes, yeah, you're right, I am stupid. But they win people over by charm and outgoingness. And I guess that's what I mean by you don't really win people over by doing that. That's the end of the video. I'll see you guys next time. Stay psyched.